We're delighted that Stefan Turnipseed uh, is with us. He is the President Emeritus of Lego Education. Many of us have a strong uh, feeling in our hearts about the importance of that work. Uh, in North America, he uh, uh, directed that company for 16 years. He's the Executive Director of Strategic Partnerships for Lego Education. He is the Chair of the Partnership for 21st Century Skills, which is a national organization that advocates for 21st century readiness for all students. Uh, as we know, uh, Lego Education has a 30-year history in creating uh, educational solutions that make learning engaging, challenging, and fun for all. Uh, all children and adults, and I see that some of you are already playing with the little packets on your tables. So with no further ado, I introduce Stefan Turnipsey. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that very much. I'd like to begin this morning by asking a question. How many of you in the room here think you're creative? Hold your hands up. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. A little more than, than normal. We must be in a very creative crowd. When you ask that question, you get a few hands in, from adults. When I ask that of teenagers, we get a few more hands. When I ask that of first graders, every hand in the room goes up. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to test the hypothesis, because I noticed that not 100% of you put your hands up. Before you, you have a, a uh, set of Lego elements and a little cellophane bag. I would like all of you to open the bag please, and take out these six elements. You'll find that there are four yellow elements and two red ones. And one of the yellow elements has a couple of eyes on it. Now I'm going to give you a task that normally I do with children that takes about 30, 45 seconds. You're going to have a minute and a half. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be okay. Uh, I don't want to put any pressure on anybody unduly. Everybody know what a duck is? Quack, quack, quack. You know, not the lame kind, just a duck. Everybody know what a duck is? All right, what I want you to do is build your version of a duck. Doesn't matter what it looks like, let your hands do the thinking. Go, build a duck. Work quickly. Sit it, just grab it. Don't, uh, doesn't matter what it looks like. There's no right answer, wrong answer, no way to do this one way or another way. Just build a duck. Well, that didn't go very far, that's good. I'm going to build a duck. I notice it's gotten very, very quiet. Adults tend to build quietly, you know. Uh, everybody, everybody starting to get a duck? Everybody starting to get a duck? We're starting to get our ducks up? When you get your ducks, start putting them in the air. Everybody has to do this now. Even if you don't want to do it, please do, humor me. OK, there's something we're going to do here. We got ducks in the air, how are we doing? We got a lot of ducks? Got our ducks in a row here on the front, fantastic. All right, what I want you to do is look around your table and those near you and see if anybody has a duck that is identical to your duck. Now you're starting to sound like you're enjoying it. Okay, what's the results? What's the results? How many in the room have a duck that is identical to a duck near them? Okay. Hey, guys. The guy up front. Need, yeah, yeah, I know when I do this, I, I'm accustomed to losing control, and so it's compl completely okay. When you look around your table, is there anybody at your table that's got a duck that's identical to your duck? Anybody that's got one that's identical? We've done this with groups up to 2,000 people, and we've saw, seen very, very few instances where there's an identical duck that shows up. What this proves is that each and every one of you are creative. You just came up with a creative solution. How do you feel about that creativity? You feel good about that? Make you feel great? Fantastic. Now, I'm going to hold my duck up, and I want to ask you another question. You can't see this exactly, but how many of you think you have a duck that is identical to my duck? You can't see it, but we've already established that, well, Soren Thompson, he's our director of curriculum, and he's seen my duck before, so he may have one. We've established that none of you will have a duck exactly like my duck, and therefore, 
I tell you now, you have all failed. <laughs> That's what we're telling our children when we give them a single point of accountability assessment. And it is just so wrong. And seen from an industry perspective, it's a simple issue for us. When a survey that was done by IBM recently, and it's been confirmed over and over again among top leading CEOs, what's the number one characteristic that you wish you had or that you're looking for in your employees? And what they say almost unanimously is creativity and innovation. And we're not seeing that in the, the employees that we have and the employees we wish to hire. If we look at the Torrance Center for Creativity Results, what we know is that at five years old, almost 100% of children will test as creative geniuses. And by 25 years old, only 3% of adults on that same test will test as creative geniuses. After 20 years of education, <laughs> well, you figure it out, okay? And it's a problem for us. It's an unintended issue. It's not something that I think was ever thought about when the high stakes testing came into a place. So the, the point is not really to talk about the bad things that have happened. The point is to talk about how important it is to foster creativity and how the very negative impact of high stakes testing in the current accountability system is having. Because for industry, creativity is the engine that drives innovation. Innovation drives product creation. Product creation drives manufacturing and service delivery. That drives jobs. Jobs drive the economy. If we can, industry cannot find the creative people we need, we will go where they are. If they're not inside the United States, then we'll go where they are. And as a matter of efficiency, so will go the jobs, because we'll co-locate our facilities there. We see this to some extent already, and it's a pressing problem for us. It's a security problem, because many of us working under government contract, we're required to hire American citizens as we should and yet we have to compete on a global, we have to compete on, on a global stage, and we have to recognize that in this global economy that we have, our competitiveness will be based on our creativity. Which leads us to this idea of accountability. Those of us in industry have mistakenly, beginning with the total quality movement many years ago, enforced a, our idea that Testing is an important thing to do in schools, and uh, so we're somewhat to blame for this. And our idea of testing is things. We test things. We test uh, the dimensions, the sizes, and we can make a single point of accountability in that way. That's not how we test our workforce. We test our workforce on knowledge, on skills, on dispositions. We test them on outcomes. We test them on, co on critical thinking, collaboration, communication, their ability to solve problems and yet we do not see that mirrored in the education community. And once again, unintended consequence, I suspect, but nonetheless, it is real. I would not say to you, as I stand here, having spent 23 years working in education, that the education system is hopeless. There are many spots where we see bright things happening. I have friends all over the U.S. where we have courageous uh, educators who are bucking a system, who are trying to work within the constraints of the policy that they have in place, and at the same time are trying to deliver the kind of student and citizen that we need to be successful in all that we are doing. And they are to be encouraged in all that they are doing, and I think that's part of what we are doing here today. And we've seen the creativity in the room already. It is possible to solve this problem. It's always a bit difficult and when you give remarks like this to determine how best to end it. And as it turns out, yesterday I was given the opportunity to secure an ending. I'd like to share with you high stakes testing through the eyes of a 17-year-old young woman. I happened to fly next to her on my trip from uh, Montgomery, Alabama, the uh, great state of Alabama, to, well I think so at least, <laughs> and uh, to, uh, to Atlanta and uh, I flew with a young woman, 17 years old. She's enlisted in the U.S. Army. And she's on a delayed enlistment. She's going to basic training now, and then she'll return for her high school senior year. She's a junior. She's going into the military police. And when she graduates from high school next year, she will go back to her, it's called AIT, her training. And she will don the uniform, and she will defend our way of life. And when I was in the military many years ago, 
and uh, we were having discussions about basic training, and this was only her second airplane flight, so she was very afraid of that and very concerned about basic, and I tried as best I could to relate some of my very dated experience. But as the conversation ensued and progressed, I said, what are your greatest fears as you look out into the future having made these decisions? You cannot believe what her answer was. She said, my greatest fear is returning to take my exit exams and failing them. The sum of all this young woman being reduced to a single grade terrifies this woman more than the decision to defend this nation. Lacey, this young woman deserves better than this. Our children deserve better than this. And we in this room can deliver better than that. And I think that's what we're here for today.